Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kimberly Rodriguez. I am an illustrator, a writer, and here on my channel, I love to share content that is very bookish, that is related to art. And soon enough, I will also be sharing content that has to do with writing. In today's video, I am sharing my favorite books of 2022 that correlate also books to get you out of a reading slump. Because last year, if you're new to my channel or if you've been here for a bit, then you'll know that last year I started my booktube channel. Um, I used to share more content related to art but last year is when I finally took the plunge and I decided to also share content relating to books as books are one of my favorite things to dive myself into it is my safe space it is the place that I go to exit this hectic life for a bit and just escape into different worlds I used to love reading a lot when I was younger but it wasn't until last year that I told myself you know what or the last couple years I've been kind of pushing myself to read more but it wasn't really until last year that I dedicated myself to reading more and I really want to share with you all books that got me out of a reading slump that I was tremendously in and yeah I hope that you enjoy this video so I have here about 10 books that I want to share with you all of books that I read last year some of these I actually read previous years that I haven't talked about here on my channel I believe but I just brought them on because these are books that I some that I read last year some that I read previous years but also that really got me out of my reading slump and wanting to read more so this video is going to be kind of like a combination of both books that i read that i really loved and also books to get you out of a reading slump if you find yourself having a hard time to read or you don't know what to read then keep on watching this video so the first book that i want to share with you all is actually a book that i read when i was I think in middle school, I want to say. This was required by school for us to read it. And when I found myself in a reading slump, I found it easy to revisit books that I maybe read either in school, like in middle school, high school, and revisit those because the story is familiar. And I don't feel anxious to have to dive myself into learning about new characters or really understanding the storyline and the plot. So I always find myself that if I'm in reading slump it's good to revisit books that I read when I was younger even if it's a children's book or a YA book I personally love children's books I love graphic books I love uh YA books. I love middle school books. I find the writing a little bit easier to understand and I find that usually when I dive into books that I don't know anything about or I just kind of know the, roughly the storyline, I get sometimes a little bit overwhelmed and I'm hard on myself that I have to really really keep up with the story's momentum and really understand what the story is about. But revisiting old books, revisiting books from our childhood, I think is a great way to kind of merge out of a reading slump and at least get you reading something that's familiar, something that you know already of. So for me, that book is The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. Sandra Cisneros is one of my all-time favorite authors. I absolutely love her poetry and her novels. I think I read this when I was in middle school, I can't remember, but I also revisited this about two years ago, I want to say, and it really helped me to start just picking up books and just, you know, getting comfortable with with having a book around me and just flipping through the pages because if you're someone that has kind of just not been reading for years and you want to slowly get back into it i i i just suggest to start with something familiar and even something short this one the house on mango street is like about 110 pages long and it has pretty big bulky letters so you don't get intimidated by those small little letters with a pretty hefty book that's another one i always recommend for a short story something short not too many pages that way you 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 start familiarizing yourself and not get overwhelmed with with a book the house on mango street in particular is about a young girl whose name is esperanza cordero who is growing up in chicago and it's pretty much a coming of age story um esperanza is just trying to find herself amongst her community amongst who she is as a woman which i love stories like this that are kind of coming of age or stories of the main protagonist trying to find who they are and where they fit in society i love stories like this because for me they're a little bit easier to understand rather than diving into a very complex world maybe you're reading something that's fantasy based uh, authors create these beautiful and fascinating worlds and so when it comes to something that's kind of like coming of age and the main protagonist um, just simply trying to find who they are and where they fit in in society or amongst their families amongst their communities it's a little bit more safer 
I guess quote unquote it would be for me and it was for me as I was trying to merge myself back into reading and also because I always find these things very relatable who has struggled with finding herself in society within her family and in the world so I highly recommend it doesn't even have to be the house on Mango Street but it can be something that you remember from your childhood from when you were in middle school revisiting those books to kind of get you moving forward into picking up more books. I also recommend Martita, I Remember You by Sandra Cisneros. It is also a short story. I think it's maybe like 60 pages long and it is just such a wonderful book. It is one of my all-time favorite books. I think I've shared about Martita, I Remember You by Sandra Cisneros here on YouTube, but I can't I can't think about what what video I made regarding that book, but Highly recommend that book as well. And since I just mentioned that I highly recommend reading short stories, I also want to recommend The Gathering Dark, which I've shared about here on my YouTube channel. This is The Gathering Dark, an anthology of folk horror stories edited by Tori Bovellino. And this is a collection of multiple of folk horror stories. I am someone that does love folk stories in general and scary stories to an extent. And so visiting books that has a collection of different stories is always a good option if you are seeking to just get back into reading. I read this last year in 2022 and I absolutely loved this book. It has so many wonderful folk stories that come from either different cultures, it has different settings, it's just a wonderful collection. I've also shared about this book here on my YouTube before and I mentioned before that I love books that have a collection of a variety of stories within a single book because that way you don't have to commit to a full-on novel. You can just simply pick up the book whenever you feel called to or if you have the time to just kind of see what story speaks to you and read it. Usually these stories are about... I don't know like three it, it ranges from like not three but maybe like five to like 20 pages each story which is really nice that way you don't have to feel like Ugh, i have to read a whole novel and that can be kind of scary i know that was scary for me so it's nice to pick up any book that's like an anthology or a collection of either short stories um and get you started back into reading so love this book if you are a fan of folk stories if you're a fan of horror in general i highly highly recommend this book so the next books that i want to recommend are actually from a category that i absolutely love it is by far one of my favorite categories to read from and that is poetry books i love reading poetry books i actually started off collecting books and reading more because of poetry and I have a video, I think it's like almost two years old on here on YouTube about some of my favorite poetry books. And I believe I have some that I mentioned here on that video. I'm just going to share some of my favorite poetry books, some that I read last year, some that I read years before that. And these are some of my favorite that whenever I find myself in a reading slump, the easiest thing for me by far is to read poetry. There is absolutely no commitment when it comes to poetry. Poetry for me is not something that's complex or hard to understand. It is so beautiful and so learned and it's by far my favorite thing to read so if you find yourself in a reading slump grab yourself a poetry book you will not regret it and slowly merge into either novels or anthologies or whatever else that you might feel called to read the first book that I want to share is black girl call home <sighs> This book by Jasmine Manns is the book that you want to read when it comes to poetry. I'm just going to read the synopsis in the back just to give this book justice. An unforgettable poetry collection about race, feminism, and queer identity. With echoes of Gwendolyn Brooks and Sonia Sanchez, Manns writes to call herself and us home. Each poem explores what it means to be a daughter of Newark, New Jersey, and America, and the painful, joyous path to adulthood as a young, queer Black woman. Black Girl Call Home is a love letter to the wandering Black girl girl and a vital companion to any woman on a journey to find truth belonging and healing this cover is just amazing i love jasmine man's i love black girl call home it's a wonderful collection of poems the next poetry book that i want to share is if they come for us by fatima ashhar look at this cover this cover is just so gorgeous i read this book maybe like two three years ago and it's always 
that book that I grab whenever I just don't want to read anything at all that just submerges me into that I have to think hard about. The synopsis says this imaginative soulful debut portrait collection captures the experiences of being a young Pakistani Muslim woman in contemporary America orphaned as a child Fatima Azhar grapples with coming of age and navigating questions of sexuality and race without the guidance of a mother or father. These poems at once bear anguish, joy, vulnerability, and compassion while also exploring the many facets of violence. If they come for us, highly, highly recommend. The next book that I want to recommend, um, the next poetry book that I want to recommend is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I love Elizabeth Acevedo and all her works. I believe her other book, um, Clap When, Clap When We Land, Clap When We Land? I think that's what it's called. I've heard so many good things about that book as well. I've been wanting to get my hands on it, but I haven't. This is actually a novel in verse book. So it, it actually tells a storyline, but it's, it's told in a poetry type of way. So it's poems. Um, but it kind of leads you in a storyline. So it says here, Xiomara Batista feels unheard and unable to hide in her Harlem neighborhood, but secretly she pours her dreams and frustrations onto the pages of her notebook like prayers. When she is invited to join her school slam poetry club, Xiomara doesn't know how she could ever attend without her religious mommy finding out. But even so, in the face of a world that may not want to hear her. Xiomara refuses to be silent. Such a good book. I really love that this book is a um, novel in verse type of book because it just makes it kind of like a fun way to read through a novel. So that was a really cool experience. And the last poetry book that I want to recommend is another Sandra Cisneros um book and this is called woman without shame this one actually came out last year look at that cover gorgeous i actually love all of the sandra cisneros poetry books they're like my absolute favorites i i have pretty much all of them um but this one i did read last year and it was just beautiful it says here woman without shame is a moving collection of songs elegies and declarations that chronicle her pilgrimage towards rebirth and the recognition of her prerogative as a woman artist these bluntly honest and often humorous meditations on memory, desire, and the essential nature of love blaze a path towards self-awareness. Woman Without Shame is the culmination of her search for home in the Mexico of her ancestors and in her own heart. Loved this book. Like I mentioned, if you find yourself in a reading slump, if you don't know what to read, poetry books are your best friends. If you want me to make a video solely on poetry books, let me know i made one a couple years ago and it's by far one of the most viewed uh videos that i have here on my youtube channel so comment down below let me know if you would like me to share my poetry collection or if you have any questions about poetry books i would be more than happy to create that video for you i do have some novels here that i want to share with you all that i've read but because i last year was really the year that i committed to reading um, I didn't really read so many novels prior to picking up and reading more novels I used to solely read poetry as well as personal development types of books But I'm leaving the novels to share with you all for last Just wanted to let you all know that I do have some novels on here that I read last year Actually all of these that I have here I, sh I, I read last year that I'm gonna share with you all This book that I want to share next is actually a personal development self-help type of book and that is All About Love by Bell Hook. Like I mentioned before, if you find yourself in a reading slump and you do not know what to pick up, what to read, pick up a self-help book. Pick up a personal development healing type of book. This by far, All About Love, is one of my favorite uh, self-help personal development growth healing types of books by bell hook like look at all those tabs that i have on here i've highlighted i've tabbed i've done so much to this book because it is a book that i constantly come back to because it makes me feel good it makes me feel empowered and less alone and i absolutely love this book i read it i believe the when did i read this 
I think either I read this the beginning of 2022 or the end of 2021 and I learned a lot. I will say that self-help books do address a lot of things that sometimes we might not be prepared for. So just be ready for that. Be ready to approach self-help or personal development books with an open heart and with kind of a warning sign that you might realize something that wasn't there before. And that can either be traumatizing, um, it can be hard to even read through and to understand, but also there's so much beauty and there's so much magic when it comes to reading about self-help books. I love reading personal development books. I love reading about ways that I can grow as a person, how I can detach myself from societal expectations, how I can live my best life, and how I can heal internalized trauma and internalized things that have been created by either families, my family's expectations, or society. So self-help books are great. In this particular book, Bell Hooks talks about literally everything that has to do with love. And this is like it goes from a range of non-platonic to platonic relationships. It talks about love within a family, love within your communities, love within yourself, love within a romantic partnership. For me, when I read this book, I realized a lot of things within the love of my family that I had not realized before. And it had me address really hard things in many instances, but I also learned and grew a lot from reading this book. So if you're someone who struggles with love in general, with love in your life in general, I highly, highly recommend All About Love to kind of get you out of a reading slump, to motivate you, and to heal because we are all deserving to live a life full of love. I'm always going to recommend All About Love. This is, I actually gifted also a a version of this book to my mother-in-law um, this past Christmas because it's by far one of my favorite books and I feel like everyone, everyone just needs to read this book. Okay, so now we are moving on to some novels here. The next book that I want to share with you all is actually a fantasy novel that I read the beginning of last year in 2022 and it is one of my most favorite fantasy books and I just can't believe that I don't really see people talk about this book because it is such a wonderful, wonderful read. I'm so glad that I actually, this was one of the first when I started reading more novels, more more books that were more novel type of books and within the fantasy realm because fantasy is just like one of my favorite types of categories to read. I am so glad that I picked up this book. And this book is called Elazzo by Darcy Little Badger look at this cover it is just so so gorgeous i absolutely love 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 this cover it has like a little wrap around um cover this story is basically about a young lipan apache indigenous girl who in her indigenous ancestry they all possess some type of magical ability her ability is actually seeing the dead and seeing ghosts and actually having a conversation with them so she is like this portal between the real world and then the the world of the dead. It says here, Elasso lives in a slightly stranger America. She can raise the ghost of the dead animals, a skill passed down through generations at her Lipan Apache family. Her beloved cousin has just been murdered in a town that wants no prying eyes, but she is going to do more than pry. The picture perfect facade of Willoughby masks gruesome secrets and she will rely on her wits, skills, and friends to tear off the mask and protect her family. I remember that in this book, Elazo has a dog, which that's why the cover is like full of like dogs. Um, she has her best friend who's a dog who ends up passing away. Um, I don't think that's a spoiler because it literally happens really fast. But I just wanted to share that because the relationship that she has with her dog is just so, so cute. It like honestly made me cry. And when he passes away, it's like the saddest thing. But then because she can see ghosts, he still follows her around everywhere. And he still continues to be in her life. But that's all I'm going to share because <laughs> I don't want to give it away. But I highly, highly suggest for you to read it. That's so it really kept me on my toes as far as the murder goes. And in this strange town called Willoughby. And I also love that this book is centered around a Lipan Apache indigenous girl. Because we need more stories about indigenous people. So... <laughs> Highly, highly recommend it a lot. So I'm also reading the prequel to this currently right now. And it is called When a Snake Falls on Earth, I believe. 
So far, I am loving it. I'm pretty sure it's like a sub story to Elazzo. I'm not too far into it yet, but yeah. Darcy Little Bedger is one of those um, authors, so I'm going to continue reading their books because they're amazing. <laughs> All right, you guys, we are almost finished. I have like four more books. The next book that I want to share is this cozy little murder mystery book. It's called Shady Hollow by Junio Black. I shared about this book not that long ago. I think I read this maybe in... In August I want to say and I absolutely love the Shady Hollow series I know there's like at least four more of the Shady Hollow series that I just I need to pick up and it is a story that has stayed with me and I've just been able to remember the characters and the storyline and so that's why like I knew like if it stays up here that means it had an impact on me so yeah I read this last year if you are a fan of murder mysteries and cozy murder mysteries in general I highly recommend Shady Hollow. I've only read this one, but I would say maybe any of the Shady Hollow books are great to get you out of a reading slump. I find that when it comes to murder mysteries, murder mysteries are a great topic and theme to kind of get you going back into reading because at least for me, that's my experience. When I'm reading something that it's like a murder mystery, I just want to keep reading. I can't put it down because you want to find out who did it and you're kind of just guessing, no, well, maybe it's this person, maybe it's that person. So murder mysteries, I always, always suggest when it comes to getting back into reading. And if you want to read a novel, go for a murder mystery book. This one in particular is actually takes place in a place called Shady Hollow. And it is a small village filled with furry little creatures who go about their business. They own shops they work it is so so cute in particular we're following this fox whose name is vera fox no whose name is vera vixen vera vixen and she works at the newspaper so she's a reporter and she's reporting on a murder that just happened in shady hollow of a toad that got murdered and they no one knows who did it so she's on a quest to try and figure out who the killer is and amongst she goes through many, many things. And you come to find out that this cute little cozy town called Shady Hollow might not be so cozy after all. So yeah, <laughs> highly, highly recommend Shady Hollow. The next book I wanna share, which I did a whole video on this particular book about, but I'm adding it on here because once again, this book has stayed up here. It was a good one. And that is The Inheritance of Orquidea Divina by Soraida Cordova. Such a freaking great book did not see any of this coming honestly <laughs> i'll just quickly say what this book is about because i did do a whole video on this and so you can go check out more in detail what this book was about on my other video which i'll like i'll link it down below if you're interested on seeing what what this book in particular is about but this book is about a woman named orquidea divina who is actually dying and she sends uh letters to all of her family to her grandchildren to her children to come and visit her to witness her death so they can all get their inheritance and orquidea divina has always been this very mysterious person to her family they don't really know much about her what her childhood was like they they don't really know much about her so they've always been very interested in who she is but she just doesn't really speak much about her experiences in the in the past so a lot all her family pretty much comes over to witness her death and they come to see orquidea divina in very particular circumstances physically i'll just say that and then from there you just dive into this other world and really really get to know who orquidea divina is so highly highly recommend this book it was one of the best books that i read last year that i absolutely loved and the last two books that i want to share are actually graphic novels which Come on, graphic novels, another great type of book to pick up if you do not know what to read or if you find yourself in a reading slump because you are not only just reading a novel and you know being wrapped up in this particular storyline but you also have pictures to go along with this so it's like it's, it's a win-win and I'm a very visual person so I love reading books that can show me a storyline so highly highly recommend to pick up any sort of graphic novel book honestly but i just want to share two of my favorite graphic novels i honestly don't have many but it is a category that i'm still growing the first one that i want to share is called the dire days of willow wheat manor which i did share last year 2022 i read this last year it is the cutest storyline and it has the cutest graphics 
so so cute i love the art on here and it says here it is a dark and stormy night when Haley sees a young man drowning in the river since her great passion is gothic romance novels she seizes the moment and jumps to rescue him just like a true heroine but when she gets him to safety she finds herself in willow weep it certainly looks like the setting of one of her favorite books a stately manor a sinister housekeeper three brooding brothers there's even an invisible ghost Except Willow Weep is not what it seems. Its romantic exterior hides the workings of a pocket universe, the only protection our world has against a great force of penultimate evil, and its defenses are crumbling. Could cruel fate make Haley the heroine that Willow Weep needs? Dun dun dun. <laughs> I absolutely love this book. Graphic novels in general are great. Like, look at that. You're like reading a whole novel and also looking at images. So cute. I absolutely loved this storyline. I love that she's a gothic romance novel enthusiast. That was so funny to me because I feel like I'm heading into that direction pretty soon. <laughs> okay, and the last book that I want to share is also a graphic novel book. And I actually have not finished reading this yet. I actually just picked up this book. So this has nothing to do with the title of this video i did not read this <laughs> last year but it is a book that i would recommend to pick up if you find yourself in a reading slump i'll say it again i have not finished reading this but i already know it's gonna be perfect because i can't i can't put it down it is so good already it has all the things that i love it is witchy it is dark academia it's magical oh it it it's just it's just wonderful there's there's murder mystery in it and the art is just beautiful to look at and that is over my dead body by sweeney boo let me just say that this cover does not do this book any justice because i i honestly don't like this cover at all um what actually drew me to this book was the title but when you open this book like let me just pull it up to a good page like when you open this book like look at this art like what it is so so pretty like oh, i need to finish this book already it is so good it says here another school year begins at the young witty hidden institute of witchcraft and abigail knows that this is the year she needs to buckle down grow up and start taking her studies seriously but everything is thrown off course when her mentee Noreen goes missing. Abby's classmates are quick to put Noreen's disappearance behind them. The coven will find her, they say. They have it under control. But Abby can't let it go. And her search for answers leads her down a rabbit hole that uncovers more secrets than she can handle. As the mounting evidence steers her towards the untamed woods that surrounds the institute, Abby begins to see that Noreen's disappearance has a lot in common with the story of another girl who went missing all those years ago. Bum, bum, bum. so good so far so good i'm on chapter two already and i need to finish it honestly i would be reading this right now if i didn't have to like go back to work right now after this video but it is such a good book i'm putting it on here because i already know this is gonna be like a 10 out of 10 for me and also the chilling adventures of sabrina is like one of my favorite shows and though i hate how it ended i'm not even gonna get started on that um but it just like it gives me chilling adventures of sabrina type of vibes and i absolutely love it like give me everything that's witchy give me everything that's magical and i'm here for it like the book starts and when they're celebrating samhain like that's like all hollows eve right like my favorite time of the year halloween right autumn fall that's when it starts they're doing like this whole celebration in their school like i already know i'm gonna love it but yeah graphic novels are a great way to merge yourself into reading or if you don't know what to read and you at least want to be able to get through a book in general and you're like me who's a visual person graphic novels are your best friends read them buy them support illustrators artists writers please <laughs> Well, friends, that is all the books. I think that was, what, like 11 or 10? I don't know. That is all the books that I have here for you all that I recommend um, reading if you ever find yourself in a reading slump or you don't know what to read. And these were my own personal favorite books of 2022. I didn't read as much as I would wanted to last year since last year was the year that I committed. Like, like the year had already started, and then I told myself, like, okay, 
I'm gonna commit to reading more. Last year was pretty crazy, but I'm still proud of myself that I got through more books than I would have previous years. I do have a vast range of books here that I recommended for you all, so there's different things to pick from. Let me know down in the comments below if you've read any of these books, what your thoughts were. Let me know down in the comments below what book you like to personally read whenever you find yourself in a reading slump or what was your favorite book that you read last year. I would love to hear from you. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. That really helps out my channel and this YouTube algorithm thing is frustrating. So likes, comments, they really help out. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching and look forward to more videos coming soon. Take care friends. Bye for now. Bye.